Welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. And now, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to EBF's Bible study in the book of Genesis. Tonight is study number 28 in Genesis chapter 40, and I'll begin by reading, Door thee unto thy place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand, after the former manner, when thou wast his butler. But think on me, when it shall be well with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For, indeed, I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. All right, um, we have spent some time looking at the three days. Um, you know, if you've been following along, uh, we took considerable time, really, looking at various scriptures, and here is what we can understand when we find reference to three days in the Bible. First, if it's just three days without being broken down, as we saw in uh, Exodus 19, today and tomorrow and the third day. Okay, now when it's broken down in that way, or as it's broken down in Luke 13, 32, I do cures today and tomorrow and the third day I'll be perfected. That is laying out basically the New Testament era, the, the entire New Testament era, two outpourings of the Holy Spirit are in view, the two periods of rain, early latter rain, would be today and tomorrow. The third day is judgment day. I come down, it said in Exodus 19, be ready against the third day. And, and Christ said, the third day will be perfected. Uh, other places tell us that uh, he will raise us up on the third day. And, and, and so uh, when it's, it's um, uh, broken down and, um, and, and a specific language is applied to the three days, then we, we can understand it represents the early rain period for the church age today, the latter rain period at the end of the church age during the Great Tribulation tomorrow, and the third day, Judgment Day. Judgment Day, our present period of time, wherein God has come down. Christ has come to judge the world. He's carrying out the judgment through His Word, the Bible, and it's a spiritual judgment, but on the literal last day of earth's existence will will be the end of all things the raising up the third day will I'll, I'll raise you up um uh, or as um the lord jesus said in john chapter 2 destroy this temple and in three days i will raise it up and and it was true of himself and it's true of the body of christ on the third day we will go up. It also it also points that out in Exodus 19. And when we go up, we'll be perfected because we will have been transformed into new spiritual creatures. Okay, that's that's one thing. One thing. Whenever you see it, um, you know, uh, uh, broken up in that manner, uh, where God is is making specific references to each of the days. Now, we have understanding of that. Uh, it can also be um, understood as three days referring to a time of judgment. And, and um, the Lord Jesus, uh, as he, he referred to um, Jonah being in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jonah's experience was a historical parable pointing to Christ's experience 
um, really at the foundation of the world, but in time in history, God worked it out over the course of three days. And, uh, you know, we've talked about this before. Jesus began to suffer Thursday evening in the Garden of Gethsemane. And you can see, you can see when he is um, uh, in agony and, and a great heaviness is upon him and, and drops of sweat are falling as blood, great drops of, of sweat are falling as blood, and he's, he's beseeching the Father, may this cup pass from me. And, and uh, what, what cup? What cup? Well, uh, we're, we're going to look at the word cup uh, shortly in our study because it, it was right there in verse, verse 11. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. And I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Well, the, the cup can uh, identify, we'll see, with, um, with the wrath of God. The wrath of God, uh, I'll just quickly go to a very clear verse that shows that in Revelation, <clears throat> Revelation 14, we read in verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. The cup of his indignation, the wrath of God poured out into the cup. That's the cup that Jesus was beseeching the Father that might pass from him. Now that gets into, um, you know, there, there's quite a lot involved with that. Um, because uh, of the, the complicated nature of the atonement, where the Bible reveals or has revealed in this last time, but it's always been true, it's always been a fact, that Christ died at, at the point of the foundation of the world. He's the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, and that would be when he drank originally, of the cup of the wrath of God. But no one was there, um, no witnesses from mankind. The world was not yet created, man was not yet created, and therefore God arranged for Christ to enter into human history, to be born of the Virgin, and, and to live out a tableau to demonstrate the things he had already accomplished and finished at the foundation of the world, which is why Hebrews 4 verse 3 tells us the works were finished uh, from the foundation of the world. And, and what work is that? John 6, this is the work of God that ye believe. It's, it, it's the work of God concerning salvation and Jesus performed that work at the foundation of the world, and that's the work that uh, James 2 speaks of. You know, faith without works is dead. Oh, it's not your work or my work or, or any Christian's work. That's obviously, no man is justified by the works of the law, Galatians 2.16, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. His work of faith, again, accomplished at the foundation of the world. And, and, and so in James 2, the, the main um, thrust, the, the point of that whole section is to show that profession of faith is dead or it is... Um, ineffective, it, it accomplishes nothing, it, it doesn't save without the accompanying work of Christ in the atonement that, that he uh, again carried out when he bore the sins of his people and died for them, the lamb slain from the foundational world. Then he went to the cross and, 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 and showed in time in history, with, with a great many witnesses, 
to the whole affair, uh, to, to his crucifixion, to his rising from the dead, uh, and, and then God wrote it in the Bible, you know, eyewitness accounts, um, to, to make a manifest. It, it, it uh, was a revealing of that which had already been done and 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 so Christ drank of the cup at the foundation of the world uh, in the sense that he bore the wrath of God for the sins of his people, which is why when he's in the garden Thursday evening that he uh, cries out, Father, if it be possible, may this cup pass from me. You see, you can understand uh, the the agony, uh, he's already made payment. There's no need to suffer the wrath of God to make payment for his people's sins. It, it's already done, but it's according to the Father's will, to the will of the Godhead, that Jesus suffer, and his suffering uh, was genuine suffering, terrible, grievous, awful suffering, as he was separated from the Father, and and uh, in order to um, make this demonstration. Well, anyway, the three days: Thursday night in the garden, Friday night in in the tomb, Saturday night in the tomb. Three nights, three days. Friday, Friday goes to the cross. Saturday in the tomb. Early Sunday morning. The third day, he he rises up, and 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 we just see uh, how God uses three days in um, you know several places in the Bible, and one consistent uh, theme for its use would be judgment, judgment, and and the particular judgment we have to determine by the context, but judgment is in view. We see judgment in view in Genesis 40 uh, with, with the butler and the baker, both in prison, and then Pharaoh is going to make his determination. He's going to decide uh, what will become of these two, and, and you know, as, as uh, I mentioned before, it's speculation, but I think it's reasonable speculation that um, given that Pharaoh, who's the king, had the chief of the butlers and the chief of the bakers thrown into prison, uh, both at the same time, it's likely there was an attempt on Pharaoh's life having to do with food or drink. And, and uh, they're, these two men are the chiefs. They, they are... The um, you know number one uh, butler, the number one baker, and 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 the butler um, you know would be the cupbearer. Um, but w well, you know, hopefully we'll have time to get into the word butler and and and, and butlership uh, in this study. But we'll see. Um, and and so the cupbearer has to do with the drink, and the baker, he you know the bread, the the cakes has to do um, with with the baker, and if there's an attempt on Pharaoh's life, um, the the um, cup bearers there would have been more than one, and and the the cup bearer or the butler put in prison would have been head or chief over a number of cup bearers in all likelihood. Um, different times of the day, different shifts, uh, ha always have to be ready. Even if the king's not drinking, you have to have someone there. Uh, and, and apparently poison made its way. They found out, they discovered it, so the king wasn't killed. But then as these men are in, in prison and, and, and encounter Joseph, or Joseph comes to them and they have their dream, you know, all according to the uh, orchestration, the the will and plan of God that they do meet, and this happened, and 
definitely we see why later when the butler remembers Joseph and at the time Pharaoh has a dream. But um, the, the, um, it, it, the period of time Joseph tells him in revealing the dream within three days, it, in all likelihood, um, the matter... The matter has been investigated, and uh, judgment has come. They, they think they figured out. They know um, the direction of, of the guilt, which would be, a, uh, you know, given that the baker is hanged, the chief of the bakers is hanged, they probably determined the poison was in the food. Now, it doesn't mean necessarily that the chief baker was plotting it could just be a failure in his role to protect the king. It could be a failure of one of his underlings, you know, one of one of the the bakers under under the uh, the chief baker um, could have been involved in the plot, or or someone just snuck it in uh, unbeknownst to any of them. But poison again. In all likelihood, I think, um, it, it's reasonable speculation, is introduced. Then they find out, okay, it was in the food, it wasn't in the drink. And, and so now Pharaoh lifts up the head of the chief butler and restores him to his butlership. Confidence has, has been re, uh, replaced. He, he trusts him once again. In his original role, he he apparently he did no wrong. He did no wrong. So uh, out you come from prison, and now, uh, as we read here, uh, Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph interprets in verse thirteen: If within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head. And restore thee unto thy place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler. And then he, he um, says, uh, think of me when, uh, when it will be well with, with thee, and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me. And, and Joseph pleads his innocence, and it's true, he is innocent, of the crime of uh, trying to lie with Potiphar's wife, he, he did no such thing. He did the opposite. But, but anyway, um, uh, he, he's telling the butler, you're going to be restored to your butlership. All right, now, concerning the word butler, concerning the word butler and butlership, um, it, it, uh, uh, you know, it, it's a little difficult because in my concordance, and you may have the same concordance, some people could have updated versions and maybe it's been corrected, or uh, I'm not sure of everyone's concordance. I only know in my Strong's concordance that when I look up the word butler, it tells me it is number 4945. 4945, and, um, and, and it's used repeatedly throughout the chapter. And it also tells me butlership, which we find in, um, uh, well, I'll start reading in verse 21 of Genesis 4, and he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Okay, so butler and butlership. My concordance tells me butlership is the same Strong's number 4945. So it's consistent throughout. However, however, and, and the, um, the, the word um, butlership, um, it, 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 well, let me, let me try and explain. I don't, I don't want to confuse anyone. But I start off with Strong's. With, with looking at the word, and I get 49.45. Then I go to another book. Um, actually, I have it here. This book, 
which is Englishman's Hebrew concordance, and you you look up uh, that number from that you get from Strong's forty nine forty five. Okay, and here uh, I find the number forty nine forty five. I see it's written in Hebrew. Uh, the pronunciation would be Mashka, Mashka, um, and I and and it's uh, found one, two, three, four, seven times. It's telling me in the Old Testament, but only once. In Genesis chapter 40. And, and it's the word butlership that we just read in verse 21. Um, there's other references. It, it's translated as well watered, which is interesting. In Genesis 13, verse 10, it says, Genesis 13, 10. Uh, and Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before Jehovah destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of Jehovah, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. It, so it's translated as well watered. It's translated as uh, drink. In Isaiah 32, 6, I won't turn there. He will cause the drink of the thirsty, I believe it says to fail. Um, it's translated as fat pastures in Ezekiel 45, 15. And it's, it's translated as drinking uh, concerning Solomon's drinking vessels a couple of times and so forth. Well, when, when that happens, when the concordance is telling me one thing, and Englishman's Hebrew concordance is telling me another. What, what um, the Englishman does is it gathers all the references, uh, you know, in, in the Strong's concordance. You have to look up the number, and then it'll give you all the words. You have to go look up each word. Well, Englishman... Um, uh, gathers the words for you and puts them under the number. So it, it's a time saver. And, and typically when, um, you know, I, I find it's rare, it's rare, but there are mistakes. You'll find mistakes in a concordance. You'll find mistakes in Englishman's. You'll find mistakes in the interlinear at times. Rare, very rare. They, they did it. Uh, outstanding job overall with all these books, but they're men. They're men, and and men tend uh, to to err, and uh, and and uh, and so when there is this rare um, mistake, well, then I'll try to go to the concordance, and I did, and in the concordance, Jay Green's. Uh, excuse me, I meant interlinear. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I go from the Englishman's to J. Green's interlinear Bible, and you look at the text, and that has Strong's numbers. And there were two different Strong's numbers. Butler was 8248, and Butlership was 4945. So then I went to Englishman's um, 8248, and there were all the references in Genesis 40 to Butler, as well as a number of other references. Well, we, we don't have time to look at that, but when we get together in our next study, we're going to look up the word Butler and see it has much to do with providing drink. Providing drink, not always um, like a cupbearer to a king. As a matter of fact, uh, drink is even given to camels uh, uh, with with the use of this word as we check it out. And uh, and and so it, it's basically going to reveal as we you know uh, uh, take a look at this that the butler 
restored to his butlership again to give the cup to Pharaoh um, and, and, you know, pressing the grapes into the cup. It, it definitely can identify with the wrath of God, the cup of the wrath of God. And, and, and yet it can also identify with other things um, as far as bringing the gospel. And, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, we've ran out of time. Right now, uh, Lord willing, we'll pick this up in our next Bible study. Thank you for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. For more studies and information, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.org. Until our next Bible study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.